All right, I am uh, I'm here speaking with Ben Newman. And uh, Ben Newman, I've, uh, I've listened to his podcast for years, and he is a uh, very highly regarded performance coach, international speaker, and best-selling author, whose clients include Fortune 500 companies around the world, business executives, sales organizations, and professional athletes in the NFL, PGA, NBA, MLB, UFC, and NCAA. One of the coolest things that I read in here is that he's a mental conditioning coach for 17-time national champion, Alabama Crimson Tide. And as we always say, roll tide. But that's pretty cool. And we're going to talk <laughs> what that means to be a mental conditioning coach because I think really right now at this time, we have to condition ourselves to be able to think differently, to, to act differently, and do different. So I think that's a really cool thing. And some of the people you come in contact with to interview and talk to, it's outstanding, from Tony Dungy to Colin Powell, uh, Brian Tracy, Kim Blanchard, authors, coaches, military uh, generals. I mean, your list is outstanding. So I just want to say kudos, man. You've done so many cool things. And uh, I'm very happy to have you be able to talk to our students, our staff, and, and some of our parents at Bremen High School today. So, you know, with that, we're going to kick off and do a little, uh, little freestyle here, talk a little bit about how, how difficult it, is, it can be to get through a difficult time like this pandemic where it's changed our world and changed how we go about education but yet doesn't change what the most important thing in education is, helping all our students to be successful. So, so Ben, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I just, I appreciate the support. I appreciate the connection over the years. And, you know, you have stayed consistent in terms of the advocacy, which I appreciate. And one thing I do want to clear up for everybody is that you picked all these highlights of stuff that you would want people to hear about me. But th the reality is that I have been through a lot of tough stuff in my life. I've been shaken to the core personally. I've been shaken to the core professionally. And I'm talking about periods of time where I'm knocked down on that mat of life wondering how in the world am I going to be able to get back up? So, so much of, you know, Bremen Strong this year and, and so much of, of what you guys are sharing and living by, it's how I've been conditioned my whole life. And even though this might not be the circumstance you want to be in, in order to really hammer home Bremen Strong, I promise all of you students and all of the teachers, those that are that are committed right now, one day at a time in a completely different environment. Bremen Strong, when you look back on this period of time, you won't believe the strength that you are building that's gonna help you persevere through so many other challenges and obstacles in your lives. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a fitting word for our seniors. And as, uh, as you can see in my background, we got the 2020 graduation sign. We got We Have Pride on it. That's our school motto. And you know, again, our senior word, um, Bremen Strong just fits so perfectly for that class thinking four years ago that was the word we picked just because again you got to be strong strong in your study strong in your attitude strong in the way you go about your business strong in your uh in your dealing with challenges and here we are dealing with the challenge we we're on week five of the pandemic we haven't been able to see our students personally we've seen them through google chats we've seen them through uh different technology but we've not seen them personally so when you're in those type of situations, what are some things you can think of to help us? Well, you know, one of the things that uh, I know you mentioned is, is on your wrist is, you know, winning every single day, which is a philosophy that I live by and that I believe in at a very, very high level. You know, if you were to go and spend time with me at any of the football programs that I've worked with, I had the blessing of winning a handful of national championships at North Dakota State, which opened up the doors to my work at Alabama and now also my work at K-State. And, you know, one of Coach Saban, if all of you were to come to practice with me one day, you know, you stand on the sideline and so often you hear Coach Saban say, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And the messaging that I had at North Dakota State, win the day one day at a time. You got to attack the process and everything that you do. Same messaging that I took to Alabama. It's what Coach Saban teaches. And what a lot of people don't realize about Coach Saban, and since you're an Alabama fan, I got to share this with you. But really for all of us, you know, Coach Saban, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, college football coach of all time. Forbes magazine rated him the number 11 leader in the world. Not coach, leader in the world. So you hear somebody like that say, the way you do one thing, the way you do everything. You know, for all of us, it's that opportunity to show up one day at a time in all areas of our life. Challenge our capacity. Challenge the times that we get uncomfortable. Take care of your schoolwork. For those of you that are athletes, make sure you take care of what you need to do, your conditioning, to be out on the field. If you're a member of the band, if you're a member of dance, whatever it might be, handle what you need to handle on a daily basis. Give it your very best. 
show up and give your best in everything that you do. Because for me, what I've realized in life, winning is about looking in the mirror at the end of the day and saying, today I gave it my very best. And for all of you, every single student, every faculty member, we don't have to be perfect. It's just look in that mirror and for you to know, I gave it my best today. Nobody can ever ask any more of you than your very best. And you can't ask any more of yourself than showing up and giving it your best one day at a time. Yeah, wow, that's exactly where I was kind of going to go next because I really think right now, you know, we want to be perfect in what we do uh, when we're at home. We want to turn in perfect assignments if we're students. We want to make sure we're doing perfect uh, lessons if we're a teacher because, again, that's how we want to do things. We're trained to be really good at what we do. And now we got to realize that, hey, getting up to bad is the key situation and, and taking some good cuts up there, even if things aren't perfect, to be vulnerable and to let it go. And then come back the next day and redo it if you need to and get out of your comfort zone. So don't let perfect get in the way of good. Doing things in a good way right now and continuing to battle with it is key. You know, uh, if, I could, if I could highlight one thing there. When you win, win based upon your effort, not based upon the scoreboard. If you win based upon your effort, the scoreboard is going to take care of itself. One, one of my, my favorite games last year was when I was with the Kansas State Wildcats. So Kansas State's new head coach, Chris Klein, and I was with him at North Dakota State. And as I mentioned, we won a handful of championships. We go to Kansas State. He brings me with him. We beat Oklahoma last year. Oklahoma was rated number five in the country. They ended up being a playoff team. Out of all four playoff teams, only one team had a loss. We were the team that beat Oklahoma. We were the only team that handed a loss to those four. And what I shared with the team before we battled for 60 minutes, I looked at the team and I said, strip the name off the jersey. It doesn't matter that we're playing Oklahoma. It doesn't matter what they're ranked. What matters is what you believe you can do if you show up and you get after it for 60 minutes, one play at a time. And if you take care of that, we will walk off this football field and then we can take a look at the scoreboard. And I know that this is about Kansas State. This isn't about Oklahoma. And I think that mindset for all of us, no matter what's going on, Stay focused on what you can control. Stay locked in on giving it your best effort, and the rest will take care of itself. This isn't something that just sounds good for a motivational, inspirational guy. I've seen it play out so many times that this isn't a football lesson. This is a life lesson because what a lot of people don't realize, they see all that I do in sports. My work started in the corporate world, and a huge amount of the work that I do today, traveling all over the world to speak, is still corporately. For Fortune 500 companies, huge construction companies. I mean, you pick the industry. And so these aren't just life lessons or sports lessons. These are life lessons. Well, the nice thing is now to your resume, you can add Bremen High School. You talked during the <laughs> pandemic on, on a Motivational Monday podcast. So I might end up getting on this next, uh, you know, bio. I'm kind of excited to know that. So I love it. I love it. <laughs> as we continue, you know, I watched that game, by the way. And that was a heck of a game. And I'll just say a hell of a game. That was a great game to watch. And to know that, again, K-State should not have won that game. They should not have won that game. They didn't have the talent that Oklahoma had. And Oklahoma <laughs> was ranked higher. It just shouldn't have happened. But yet, the belief, the belief in making it happen in the, and what was done prior, that's the key. What was done prior. So now, now you know, if I'm, a, if I'm a freshman, if I'm a sophomore, if I'm a junior, if I'm a senior finishing up the final weeks, it's all about what I've done prior to get to this point. I mean, our seniors are done on May 14th. That's their last official day. And they should be done with their credits at that point. But yet I'm sure there's some, some, some students that aren't maybe working as diligently as they should because they're not used to this type of maybe educational process. I agree. I wouldn't be either. So I totally understand. But what kind of well, things do we got to think about there? Absolutely. And I would. this isn't easy for me. Yeah. You know, I, I don't say this to impress anybody. I say this to impress upon the point. I travel all over the world to speak seven to 80, 70 to 80 times a year. So sometimes I'm on a football field. Sometimes I'm on a big stage somewhere. I've spoken in nine different countries. So like I'm not used to being at home and you're not allowed to leave. So this is not normal. This is not easy. I'm not, I mean, I love spending the time with my family and my wife. You may be able to hear those speed of our kids. It sounds like it's recess time in, uh, in our school room <laughs> here in the house. But I, I, I just, I'll share it. This is not easy. And Chris Voss, who's a, a legendary FBI hostage negotiator, when he talks about prisoners of war, he says a prisoner of war, they can endure torture. They can endure the pain. 
The toughest thing for a prisoner of war is the uncertainty of not knowing when it's going to end. And I think so for all of us, it's okay to experience the emotion. I experience the emotion. I don't like not knowing when this is going to end. That really bothers me. So even though I'm the motivational, inspirational guy, that doesn't mean that I'm not a positive, optimistic, motivational person. I'm a real person and I have emotions and this is not easy for a teacher. It's not easy for a student. So I think it's okay to admit that, but the way that I've learned to navigate through it is by what I've always done, which is you focus one day at a time. It's one of the reasons rather than my office, I wanted to film down in my workout room. This is how I set the tone every day. I wake up crazy, crazy early and I work out every single morning because it's what gets my mind right. And so if you guys follow me on Instagram or Twitter, it's at continued fight. You'll see how early I wake up in the morning, but I wake up crazy. Early. I'll put out a positive thought to the world. I read, I put my head in a book that's very, very important to me. And then I come in here. And by the time I do those things, before I hear the pitter patter of my kids feet, I'm prepared for the day, whether there's a pandemic or I need to hop on a plane to go speak somewhere. So I think for all of us, you have to identify the environment and recognize you control your mindset. And you can either control your mindset to say, hey, I'm going to be negative today or I'm going to choose to be positive. But that starts when you wake up. And if you choose to be positive, positive action will follow. Yeah, that's, that's so true. I, I was uh, in our class meetings because we did some uh, class me meetings like this. One of the things we really focused on was getting a schedule, starting up in the morning with a schedule because you control your own time. And let's be honest, you're an adult, I'm an adult. It's easier for us to understand as adults how we can control our time. Even though we might have kids in our house <coughs> that try to control our time, we still are in control. We can get up earlier than them. We can stay up later than them in most cases. But in some situations, you know, as a student, you just got mom or dad yelling at you, it's time to get up, it's time to get up. And after a while, it's time to give up, it's time to give up, we can't get them up. So students, if you're listening to this, I hope that you heard what uh, Mr. Newman said. Get out of bed and get yourself a routine going. Get your nose in a good book. Do some push-ups, do some sit-ups. Maybe go out there and run a little bit. Do the things that, you know, you put your schedule together. I have talked to some students that really enjoy this time of building their own schedule and when mm. to do their work. So I think there's a lot of students that have actually kind of conquered this a little bit by, again, saying, hey, I can do this, and I'm very proud of them, and I want to encourage our others to, hey, you can do this too. Just got to be a little bit more – discipline in, in yourself. It can't just be playing Fortnite. How many Fortnite games have you played in the last couple hours here, uh, Mr. Newman? <laughs> I've never played Fortnite in my life. My son enjoys it, but uh, I've it's never played game. it in my life. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. There's good communication skills being used in Fortnite, and also it's pretty cool to see the teamwork that's going on. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, we could give a grade for Fortnite effort. I'm saying I've seen some good out in my house <laughs> watching my kids, uh, I got a son and a daughter, use teamwork to get to the goal. So they show me a lot of positives in a world that I wouldn't think that, that they'd be doing that. So I love it. I think there is some positives from some of these games. I tell you. Oh, let me, let me tell you something. The, the, the internet, it, it, it's, a, it's amazing. I feel like my children, so my son Isaac is 12, my daughter Kennedy Rose is nine, and I feel like because of the world that they live in with technology, it's just a different level of thinking. You know, it's, a, it's expanding the mind. It's just, there's just so much that they can get their hands on so fast. But I think it takes a lot of discipline, right? Because you either, you either say, this is going to help me find the easy route, or you say, hey, this can make things easier, but it also makes me more efficient, which means my capacity might be greater. So it's paying attention to the fact that when we understand we have great capacity, you can actually take on more. And I'll share this with you. Sometimes this isn't easy to hear, but, you know, the life lessons are important. And if we're Bremen strong, you know, you got to tap into that capacity. You know, later on in life, you're going to look back on this period of time and you're going to realize, like, wow, like, I learned about personal responsibility. I learned about personal accountability. I learned what it means to actually show up and do what you say you're going to do when nobody else is watching over me. It's going to help you in your careers. It's going to help you in your jobs. It's going to help you be a great parent. I mean, there's so much that's going to come from this that you can't see it now but I know that that's going to happen for you. Yeah, I agree totally. And I, and parents, I'm giving a shout out that, Hey, I think the video games are okay. Students make sure you just do it in moderation, get your schoolwork done first. So have some fun, but get, get the schoolwork done. Hey, I got a question for you. I want you to kind of expound on this a little bit. And we always talk about, 
at Bremen with our staff about, hey, it's very, very important, especially in a situation like this, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself first, because if you can't take care of yourself, you definitely can't take care of anybody else. I'm sure that you've heard people talk very similar to that. I didn't take that up. That, that is something I stole from others who, again, have good organizations. They know their people need to take care of themselves. So how do you feel about that? Where, where are you with that, especially in this pandemic? Yeah, the, you know, the highest performers, they, they absolutely, they are conditioned to show up and be their best and to operate in a controlled environment and to control a positive mindset. So take care of you. That's one of the biggest parts of it. That's why I shared that morning routine. Morning routine has been critical for me. Go and research any of your favorite leaders, CEOs, athletes. They get up extraordinarily early and they do more than other people are willing to do. I like to call it the unrequired. The highest performers, they do the unrequired. It's the things that other people can't see, they won't talk about, they certainly won't do, that high performers choose to make a priority. So understand what the unrequired is. Be willing to do a little bit extra. And that also is taking care of you. It's a great, great point. That's why I say the working out, reading good books. I'm taking care of me before I can take care of anybody else. Uh, one thing that I would also recommend, I call it The Burn, which is the title of our podcast. For those of you that have watched our YouTube show on the podcast, every week we have celebrities, famous athletes that are on, and, and we talk about The Burn, right? It's not, hey, tell me your highlights and your resumes and how many touchdowns did you score? Or how many millions of dollars did you sell your company for? No, we get down to what drives you. And for all of us, I believe we have this burn inside of us. And The Burn it's that fire, it's that fuel, it's what makes you who you are that's gonna give you that Bremen strength on a whole nother level to accomplish the things you believe you can accomplish. When you connect to that burn every single day, it lights your why and your purpose on fire. And that is what causes you to take the necessary action to do what it takes to perform at your highest level. So I, I wanna get a little emotional with everybody and, and be real, because I'm, I'm a real guy. My burn is the fact that I lost my mother 11 days before my eighth birthday. And I watched my mother come to the dinner table with an IV stand. When I had an older brother, Drew, still have an older brother, Drew, and myself. My mom had two children, divorced when, my, uh, when I was six months old, so divorced from my dad. Never knew my parents together. My mother's last year living, she would come to the dinner table with an IV stand to ask my brother and I how our day was at school. Sometimes it took one nurse, sometimes it took two nurses, and she'd put one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other. And my mom would sit at the head of that dining room table and she would pan over to the right and look at my brother Drew and say, Drew, how was your day at school? And she'd pan over to the left and she'd look at me dead square in the eyes and say, honey, how was your day at school? You see, I got the, I got the honey because I was the younger son. Yeah, well, and, you probably were sweeter. And, <laughs> and my mother taught me the greatest life lesson I've ever learned. It's not how long you live, it's how you choose to live your life. And my mother was a teacher. So when you reached out, it was the easiest yes in the world for me to say, absolutely, I would love to give back to the students. I would love to do that, especially during this time. Because if you connect to that fire inside of you, the way my mother has lit this fire, my mother left a fire inside of me. She maybe left this earth November 2nd, 1986, 11 days before my eighth birthday. But she has left a fire in me and it will not go out. I don't care what kind of adversity challenge you bring to me. You cannot turn this fire off. I wake up like this in the morning. I'm bouncing off the walls. It's just the way that I am because my, my, my mom put this fire in me. Now, I'm not the only one that has a story. Every teacher watching this, every student, every parent that's going to have the chance to watch this, you all have a story too. We all have a story. And when we go through this challenge and adversity like we're going through now, I always encourage people, shift your perspective. Think about something that you've been through that's tougher than what we're going through right now. And for some of you, this may end up being the toughest, loss of jobs and loss of lives. It's horrible. Prayers go out to all of the families that are struggling, who have lost, who have those on the front lines who are battling this. This is not easy. But if you stay connected to that burn inside of you, because we all have that story. I, I, I know I'm not the only one. If you stay connected to that burn to start your day, get that fuel going, let that fire go the light, the why, and the purpose on fire, and it's easier to stay positive. The highest performers, they know that burn, and they stay connected to it. Wow, you summed it up pretty well there. Connect to the burn. Find the burn, connect to the burn. I mean, you end your podcast with go do great things. I mean, and yeah. I'm hoping that through our little talk together, through your words, great words, 
and through your story. I mean, I appreciate you sharing that story. I've heard that before on your podcast. And yes, it makes you think how lucky you are if you haven't had to go through that. But everybody's gone through something, as you said, and, and it's important for us to relate to that. It's how we come through. It's how we come through when we have to deal with something uh, of that magnitude in our life that, that really forms who we are and helps us get to the point of, hey, I am successful because of that. And I hope we can look back at this pandemic and say the same thing. Those six weeks, those 12 weeks that we couldn't go to school, that we couldn't see our family like we used to, all the things that, that, that we got used to were taken away from us like in one day. And now we've had to get through that. And, and I'm so proud of how our staff and our students have been able to get through that. I just want to get, continue to encourage them to, again, as you would say, connect to the burn. Because right now that's your burn. I hope that's your burn. I hope you're, if you're a freshman, you're understanding the importance of, hey, I got to finish this. I got to make sure on May 27th, I got all my credits in line. If I'm a sophomore and junior, same thing. And if I'm a senior, May 14th should mark a special day. That's my last day of high school. I should have all my work done at that point. And even though graduation isn't going to be where we hopefully can formally walk until July, we know on, on May 14th, we're done. We shouldn't be doing any more work. So I really want to just shout out to my seniors get the work done now. Connect. Connect to the burn, because right now the burn should be getting that work done. That should be your focus point. And, and again, we do these messages on a weekly basis to hopefully connect with you and hopefully get you feeling that, hey, what you're doing is meaningful. Your work is meaningful, even though it's different. So again, I, I, I want to thank you. I want to hit with what you said and go do great things. At Bremen, we talk about all the time, we have pride. We have pride at Bremen. Pride who we are, what we do, and how we do it. So how we get through this really is going to show our pride and show us who we are as people. And I know I got confidence in my guys, my staff, in my students, and in my parents. And we're going to come together through this tough time, and we're going to be better because of it. So Ben, I really want to thank you for taking the time, you know, to meet with me. I mean, this is your job. This is what you should do. <laughs> I was able to go ahead and do something totally different that got me stoked for a week thinking about my meeting with you. And uh, I honestly haven't done anything all week that's just thinking about this. <laughs> but with that in mind, I really do appreciate you taking the time and making today's message very meaningful and hopefully inspiring us to continue to go do great things and connect with the burn that we feel every day. Again, I thank you, Ben. Thank, thank you so much. And you know, thank you and congratulations to all of the graduating seniors and for all of you you know, who are freshmen, sophomores, juniors, just embrace these final days. Embrace these final days and just know this is giving you strength that's going to help you later on in your journey, I promise you. And seniors, you're going to go to college and think, man, this is a breeze. This is nothing compared to what I had to go through in my senior year. And you're going to carry that new strength and that new perspective everywhere you go in your life. So congratulations. Best of luck to you on your continued journey. And I appreciate you reaching out. Your energy was felt through the email. I feel it even, even more on fire live here. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now. Thanks.